Yeah, hi students, how are you? Junior A, B, and C. Uh, I hope you're fine, I hope you're safe at home. I hope you're healthy with your families and your loved ones. Today, I'm gonna to be explaining to you a summary of unit seven and eight because next week is going to be the formative evaluation, okay? So I'm gonna be sharing with you right now the PowerPoint about unit seven and eight. Let's check it out. <clears throat> well, first of all, I think it's very important that we, the English department, hope you guys are okay and safe and possibly happy the best you can. I know it's difficult, but not impossible. So, as I explained er earlier, uh, I'm gonna be explaining a feedback of unit seven and eight. And the English department sends you guys a warm virtual hug. Okay, so let's check it out. Obviously, it's very important to consider quotes and today is gonna to be obviously positive quotes. The first is be positive, smile, just breathe, connect with nature, switch your thoughts and look for possibilities. And in order to achieve this, it's very important for you to be happy to forget the negatives and focus to the positive. Well, let's continue. The present perfect. Well, I'm going to be doing a summary of the present perfect. Very summarized, okay? Not like detailed specifically. As you can see here, we have the structure of the present perfect, affirmative, negative, and interrogative. And what is the present perfect? When do we use it? ¿Para cuándo lo usamos? Bueno, lo usamos eh, cuando se refiere a una acción que empezó en el pasado y todavía continúa en el presente. So, for example, I have lived in San Fernando for a lot of years. I have worked in San Fernando College for 13 years. Algo que tú empezaste a hacer y que todavía continúa en el tiempo. So let's check out some examples. For example, I have seen so many movies, series, and documentaries during the pandemic. In the, my, in the pandemic, my grandma has learned to use apps. Very important to teach the elderly. Uh, in negative, in San Fernando College, students haven't been able to go to classes since March. My mom hasn't gone to work since June. And if we're talking about questions, have you seen an interesting and an unforgettable documentary this year? And what about this question? Has San Fernando entered quarantine yet? Well, this answer is yes, because on um, the independence holidays this weekend, September 18, 19, and 20, San Fernando has entered the had entered the quarantine. Okay, so let's continue. So we're going to be talking about now, we're going to be reviewing time expressions, el for and el since, okay? So what do we, when do we use for and when do we use since? El for, por, ya, significa por, se usa por un periodo de tiempo, ya. Bono, the British singer of U2, uh, this famous band, has performed on stage for 20 years. And el since, que significa desde, se usa el momento cuando la acción empezó. I haven't seen Mary since last week. So let's do some exercises now. What is the correct answer? Is it for or is it since? It hasn't rained June. It hasn't rained since June. We have been married 12 years now. We have been married 12 years now. We have been married for 12 years now. I've known John a very long time. I've known John for a very long time. We have known each other since high school. And I've been studying at San Fernando College since 2008. And during the pandemic, we have been at home for approximately six months. Okay, now to continue, we're gonna be checking out the verb patterns and body language of unit eight. In unit eight, we were checking out the infinitives and the gerunds. Okay, so let's begin with the infinitive. What is an infinitive? An infinitive is un verbo que siempre va a ir precedido de una proposición to, to go, to eat, to love, to jump, to dance, etc. Okay, and here, I'm not gonna be explaining this like detailly, but I'm gonna be showing you uh, 
there are some rules. If you want, you can take a screenshot with your camera. You can find it in internet. Everything, as you know, is in internet. There are some rules. Hay ciertos verbos que siempre, después de estos verbos, en la regla número uno, como podemos ver aquí, siempre van a ir, eh, eh, van a continuar con to, agree to, appear to. En la regla dos, hay ciertos verbos que van a ir acompañados con un objeto, una persona, y luego el to. So, for, for example, I asked my mom to. Um, I forced my brother to. Siempre van a ir en la regla 2, van a ir acompañado con un objeto, una persona, y luego el infinitivo. En la regla 3, después de cierto adjetivo, no cualquier adjetivo, después de adjetivo de sentimiento, ya, o de probabilidad, va a ir el to. La regla 4, con ciertos verbos tenemos el stop, el remember, el forget, el regret, el go on. Esos verbos van a ir con el to después. Y la regla 5 con verbos de like, love, hate, también van, eh, continúan con el to. So let's check out some examples here. In number one, the picture one, everybody look at one. My sister refused to help me with my project or my sister, my sister refused helping me with my project. The correct answer is to help. Number two, we need to buy a new toaster or we need buying a new toaster. We need to buy. La cuarta regla que está en la regla número uno, el, el to help, to buy, van a ir siempre con el to, el, el, el refused to help, el need to buy. Siempre es un verbo, refuse, help. Lo que está en la número uno siempre van a ir con un infinitivo. En la número tres, we love. ¿Qué pasaba con el love, like, hate, enjoy? El love, like, hate, enjoy siempre van a ir con un infinitivo o también con un gerundio. Ojo, pueden ir con las dos. We love to play with our dad and we love playing with our dad. Así que las dos respuestas son correctas. So let's continue with gerunds. What is a gerund? A gerund, here, as it says, Es un verbo que termina con ing, lo sabemos, y también el gerund no siempre va a significar caminando, jugando, depende del contexto en el cual está la oración, ¿ya? Si comienza la oración con ing, es eh, trabajar, no es trabajando, ¿ya? Entonces, es eh, muy importante reconocer, ¿ya? Hay tres usos del gerund, como sujeto en la oración, como cuando empieza Working is good for people. Smoking is bad for your health. Yeah. La regla dos, después de una preposición, el about, yeah. El about, cuando encontré el about, siempre va a ir con un ing. Yeah. They talked about traveling. La uso tres, gerundio después de ciertos verbos. Como expliqué anteriormente, la diapositiva anterior, eh, el like, love, enjoy, hate, siempre van a ir acompañado con un ing o con un infinitivo. Pero cuando estamos dando una opinión, Entonces, let's continue. Let's look at the first picture. So, my boss stopped three months ago. Mi jefe paró o dejó tres meses atrás. My boss stopped smoking or to smoke? Smoking. Number two. Larry detests practicing judo with me or to practice judo with me? Practicing. Number three. Joe hopes passing his math exam or to pass his math exam. Hopes passing. Okay, so let's continue. Idioms. What is an idiom? ¿Qué es un idiom? No es un idioma, como algunos tienden a confundirse. An idiom ya tiene que ver con una expresión, con un dicho o un grupo de palabras que tiene un significado metafórico. Todo, todo los idiomas en el mundo tienen modismo, tienen idioms. ¿Ya? Y obviamente van cambiando de acuerdo a su cultura, etc. Entonces aquí es importante aprender alguno en inglés. ¿Ya? Aquí hay unos ejemplos, pero a mí lo que quiero enfocarme hoy en día es la que yo puse en la guía un, eh, unidad 8. ¿Qué tiene que ver con la guía unidad 8? Yo le entregué un montón de eh, idioms que están aquí y también estaba en la guía de ustedes. Y usted tenía que buscar cuál es el mejor significado literal de cada idioma. So let's look at number one. El idioma number one tiene que ver con get out of hand. Get out of hand. 
So, ¿Qué puede significar literalmente to get out of hand en esta situación cuando dice que hay, hubo una fiesta y la cosa, the thing got out of hand? What do you think? ¿Cuál sería el significado literal aquí? Let's check it out. To get out of control. To get out of hand significa get out of control. And number two, tenemos el, el idiom kicked up a fuss. Ya estamos hablando de una casa desordenada, eh, los papás llegaron y they kicked up a fuss. ¿Qué hicieron los papás? ¿Cuál sería la número dos? La número dos, were furious. Three, uh, eye to eye on anything. Uh, we don't see eye to eye. Cuando hablamos de don't see eye to eye, estamos hablando de, número tres, estamos hablando que no acordamos. To not see eye to eye significa not agree. Y la número cuatro, tenemos otro modismo que es went straight over my head. Cuando hablamos de algo, cuando no entendemos absolutamente nada, tú puedes decir, I don't understand, or I didn't understand anything, o I, it's like totally went over my head. Number five, cuando hablamos de don't waste your breath, ¿ya? Yeah? ¿Qué significa don't waste your breath literalmente? Vamos viendo. Number five, it's not worth, no vale la pena. Don't waste your breath on it. No vale la pena discutir o pensar en eso. And number six, I've hit a snag, okay? Hit a snag, es un modismo que se ocupa, que significa I'm having trouble. Estoy teniendo problema. So you can say I'm having trouble, I'm having a complication, or I've hit a snag. En la número siete dice a sweet tooth que suele pasar al hombre y las mujeres. ¿Qué significa to have a sweet tooth? Loves sweet things. Ok. Y la última. Pulling my leg. Are you pulling my leg? ¿Qué significa pulling my leg que lo ocupa mucho? Significa, are you joking? Are you kidding me? Ok. So, let's continue. To finalize, we have very important to take in consideration to have in mind that being a positive thinker makes your life way more way more easier healthier happier because in these situations during the pandemic it's been very hard for all of us not only chileans for all the world economically speaking socially speaking physically speaking mentally speaking but what's really important here is that oneself we have to be very positive so Um, to finish off, remember, if you have any questions, doubts, yeah, if you complaints or anything at all, you can write me or Miss Eva or Mr. Eric an email and we'll answer you as soon as possible. A big hug, take care and be safe.